Hello everyone. Today I have, well, I've got some really great news coming up in the next week. Um, so today I am going to just give you a little bit of um, a related kind of um, video. I'm not going to say what it is yet, um, but uh, next week you will um, be aware of, of why I've done this video. So um, I'm going to talk about drum mixing and um, a little bit about um, how I go about drum mixing and some theories, very briefly anyway, um, about routing and I'm going to just mention the um, folks at Harrison have sent me the drum character uh, plugin and the Tomgate plugin. So I'm going to mention how I use them in my workflow. Um, you can apply these concepts to other digital audio workstations and, you know, analog mixing. But there's some really cool stuff um, in these uh, plugins that uh, I'd, I've not seen elsewhere um, implemented in the same way. So, uh, yeah, let's get into it. I have, of course, um, a set of multi-tracks here, and I've just stripped it down, really. I've just got overheads. I've taken out the room mics, and I've got some drums. So let's have a listen to them as they are. Okay, cool. So that's the uh, the drums as they are, recorded through a Neve VR60. Uh, I think it was a Pearl Masters kit, and a custom handmade snare and most of the microphone names are on the titles i think the overheads were u87s so what i want to show you is um one of my regular tricks is to align phase uh, so i've got two drum mics uh, two kick mics uh, let's have a listen to the inside kick mic which is the d112 Okay, and the outside mic, which is the FET 47. Now that's a little bit backed off from the kit and it's kind of like a cross between um, a, a kick mic and, a, and, a, and an overhead almost. It's at floor level though, um, but it's just centered on the kick. And that's obviously in front of the resonant head. So um, what I've done is I've just aligned these uh, close as possible. So the attacks are in phase. Talking about phase, the next thing I usually do when I'm working on drums is find a section where all the drums are played, including toms, as much as possible anyway. Um, I right click um, and I choose optimize polarity and this will give me a few options about how I might switch the polarity around. Now these are quite well recorded so there's not going to be anything too extreme. Uh, yeah, you can just see it's just the toms and the hats. Now the toms are going to be uh, pretty much um, gated anyway, uh, so that's not too much of a worry, uh, but let's audition what this sounds like. The original. And the suggested phase change. Well, let's let's keep with that phase change. I mean, the the in this case, the hats are going to be um, high pass filtered anyway, so it's not too much of a worry. But um, when I apply that phase change, the um, the buttons, the phase clip buttons, are activated across the top of the mixer. So what's next? I'm just going to um, look at very briefly at the kick, the snare, and the tom how I might go about starting to treat these. Um, very briefly, you'll notice if you're eagle-eyed that I split my drums up into shells and metal. More about that another time, but there's a very good reason for that. Um, and uh, it helps with my workflow, certainly, in terms of mixing. So, kick. Let's listen to this internal kick. It's okay. It's, it's a bit honky, though, isn't it? So let, I've, I've pre-EQ'd a little bit here, so we can hear what my EQ sounds like. It's not quite there, it's not giving me the sub that I want. Um, now you don't want too much low end in your kick to, to envelop everything, but um, I, I feel this one is missing a little bit. So I'm just going to drag in the drum character plugin. There are presets across the bottom, I'm not going to use those. So what it does, the drum character plugin, uh, this is a Harrison Consoles um, 
plugin, and it's only available on Mixbus, folks. Let you EQ the attack and the tail of a drum hit in a different manner. So we've got a two band EQ. We can have peak or shelf. Let's show you that. Shelf or peak on both of them. And uh, we can uh, apply the first EQ to the attack of the hit and the second EQ to the tail. There's also useful tools like trim and a sort of threshold level here. So let's have a crack at this bass drum. See if we can do something that we can't do in. Um, just EQ. I'm going to add some very low frequency. Okay, a bit more to the tail as well. I'm going to add more click to the top. Around the 5, 6k mark. And I'm going to roll off the top of the tail. That's okay, but I might want to just actually suck out some of the mids for the tail. That sounds good. And of course, that's a pretty extreme version of, of uh, you know, EQ. There's like 12 dB boost and, on certain parts, but it's only on certain sections of the, of the actual beat. And remember, we've got two kick mics. We've also got this kick mic. So, you know, we're, we're kind of including that to some extent. And, you know, we can make the signal more or less processed. But that's that's a pretty extreme processing. Um, I think when I was prepping this file, I actually added the EQ as well. Um, yeah. Now, to tighten that up even more, um, I'm just going to drop in the XTEG expander gate, which is my favorite gate at the minute. Um, and or one of my favorite gates, the other is the Tom gate. Um, and I'm going to use a side chain, so I know where this side chain was. So let's solo this up and listen for. There we go. And a slightly shorter release to attack and I'm going to drop in look ahead cool so that's much tighter let's listen with it bypassed so we're getting rid of a lot of that nonsense in the background and it means I can compress if I want to compress that bass drum I can compress that more I can push it more in the mix without bringing up all the other cymbal sound and so on um, so we're getting there, we're getting there. Let's pan our overheads out a little bit, not too much because we need to leave room for other things. And let's just tidy these hats up. I'm gonna put some EQ into the overheads and hats just to um, cut out all the low end. So um, there's a couple of approaches to that, but we'll talk about that at another date. Um, so I'm basically just cleaning up all the unnecessary stuff that's going on. Um, for this type of drum mixing. Okay, cool. So let's move on to the snare now. Again, the snare isn't giving me quite what I want. Have a listen. Very weedy, isn't it? Very weedy, very weedy and thin. So I'm gonna try, instead of EQing it, I'm gonna try and use the drum character. Um, now I know there is a fat snare mode here. Uh, which is a good start point, but I know that I need a, a load more below sort of 250. Um, there's obviously a slope on here, um, and so I'm going to go up to about 299 and see what see what happens because um, this now is severely lacking in low end. Let's bypass this. Yeah, that's that's really giving it some. I want to add a bit more sparkle to the snare as well, so I'm going to push the attack up here. And one really great thing, when you have only top mic'd a snare, or you receive a snare that's only top mic'd, um, you can use the tail, um, band two of the tail, to push more or less snare wire sound. Have a listen to what happens when I change this. We 
can add lots more snare or less. Snare wire, that is. So that's what I'm going to do to the snare. Um, I've pre-prepped an EQ as well, just to give it a bit of extra oomph. And that EQ is coming in after the um, after the drum character. Just a little bit more around 300. And of course, you know, you, you mix to taste on the actual track that you're working on, a more holistic approach. But um, this is just an example of how I can sort of deal with problems with these um, the uh, drum character plugins. So that's the snare. Um, I'm going to try and keep this really quick, so we're just going to move on to the toms. Now I know that toms 2 and 3 aren't played at any point during this piece of music, and there's only one hit on the tom here, uh, just because of the section I chose for you really. Um, so let's have a little look at where this tom kicks in. So, doom, there we go. Let's listen to it soloed. Great, cool. So, um, there's a lot of noise. Now, I could manually go in there and chop out everything around the tom. I'm not going to do that today. I am going to use the tom gate. So I've got my plugin manager up, and there's the tom gate. I insert the plugin, and I'm just going to put it at the start of the chain again, so it's not influenced by EQ or compression or the fader position. And we just skip to playback. So, how does this tom gate work? Well, it lets us capture an analysis um, of the, the tom and program that into the gate and then it looks for that sound. So, all I'm going to do is I'm going to select a range and um, press close curly braces for those of you on Mac. I think it's the same on PC and Linux. Um, and L to loop. And then I'm going to say, learn toms. I'm going to hold this button. And there we have, there we have our toms learned. Um, now I'm going to play back some spill. And hold learn spill. Brilliant. I'm going to drop the deck even further. Let's try holding the spill a bit more. Through this fill. Okay, cool. So now what should happen, when we hit the tom, we should get a nice clean tom come through. Excellent. And you know, it's okay to have a little bit sneaking through of spill if you if you uh, you want a more organic sound. If you want a less organic sound, you can go in and chop out all this spill anyway. But um, it's still good to use gates when you're doing that. It, it lets the sort of sound breathe a little more than if you were doing a, a, a chop off at the end of the top. Um, and it's a lot easier as well. It speeds up your mix workflow. So that is a, a basic little rundown of a couple of the plugins that I use, um, a couple of the EQ techniques, and a little sort of way of working on a bit of restoration of um, some drums that were well recorded but not perfectly recorded. So, um, as I say, some cool announcements coming up later this week and I uh, hope you can take this information and enjoy it and I will see you next time. Happy recording.